I don't know if you know this, but I hyperventilate at the start of every swim. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Although it's 6.38 in the morning. This is the earliest I've woken up in a while. I still have, I don't know if you can see, but I still have the bags under my eyes. Do you oh. see them? I, I think I didn't get rid of them since that lockdown down thing started. <laughs> I kinda, I'm keeping them. I know. You know, I used to get up at 4.30 in the morning to go swim practice, and now getting up at 6 is like... 6 is sleeping in for you. 6 used to be sleeping in. Now 6 is like... That's like waking up really early. <laughs> this was a, a struggle. <laughs> I know. I, I like the first weeks. I, I felt like a teenager again. It was amazing. I know. Uh, by the way, I love, I love your setup. Of all the places in your house, you picked the pantry. <laughs> figured like, well, that's my My spot. husband's still sleeping. Yes, <laughs> it's 6.30 in the morning. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> I have a little round of quick fire questions for you. Okay. To find out some more, some less serious. So I'm going to start you off fairly easy. L.A. or New York? Definitely L.A. I hate New York. Paris or London? Mm, Paris. Black beans or refried beans in a burrito? Refried beans. Mountains or ocean? Mm. I'd have to be mountains with a lake. Like, I've always grown up. I grew up in Maine. I grew up on the water. My family has a lake house. I have to be by water. I don't really care if it's ocean or lake, but I love the mountains. They, like, speak to me who has it easier in life women or men 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 don't have to have their periods they don't have to i don't know like as a professional athlete if you want to have a baby the men can go off and have sex and get their wife pregnant and then they just keep training and doing their thing and racing and the women are the ones which is by the way being pregnant is a really wonderful thing i need to catch not that i know because i haven't been pregnant but i think it's a wonderful thing so but you don't have to go through all that. So men just can like go about their lives. This one I know is going to be easy for you because you are a self-proclaimed ice cream lover. So oh. what's your favorite this ice cream This is my flavor? ice cream book. I actually brought it out because I've been making tons of ice cream. It says make it happen on there, by the way. Um, I've been going bonanzas making ice cream since this whole quarantine thing. So my favorite ice cream flavor? That's a good question. Probably, it's a little bougie, but probably popcorn mandarin. <laughs> Just, you know, one of the uh, typical flavors you find <laughs> in, in your corner <laughs> ice cream store, popcorn mandarin. I'm quite serious about making ice cream, and I've been sort of thinking that I might get to have a side hustle as an ice cream maker. And Chelsea and her husband, Steve, have been my taste testers. And Chelsea, when we were on a ride, like, earlier this year, I was like, so I'm sorry sort of thinking I'm going to do this ice cream thing. And she's like, yeah, whatever. She like pretty much brushed, brushed me off. And then I gave her some of the ice cream to test. And she said it is the best ice cream she's ever had. How far are you into your ice cream business? Is there a name yet? No, but I've been, I've been brainstorming for names. One of the names I came up with was Bougie. <laughs> Bougie. Bougie ice cream. <laughs> or bouge. Just bouge for short. That was the longest answer ever to a quick fire question. What's something you're afraid of? Drowning. And I actually oh. have a very irrational fear. I won't get on a sailboat. Like, there's no way in hell you'll ever get me on a sailboat. Because my irrational fear is that the sailboat is going to tip over. I'm going to be hit in the head with the boom. And I'm going to drown. <laughs> and I know. I know this is really irrational. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You picked a great sport as a profession for someone who's afraid of drowning. <laughs> I know. And I don't know if you know this, but I hyperventilate at the start of every swim, which is only pr probably part of the reason why I always get dropped and, and then at the back. But, like, <laughs> that's true. Like, I, I'm so scared of drowning. I hyperventilate at the start of every swim. I have to, like, calm myself down. And then I can like go about my business. And the beauty of it all is I'm by myself then because I don't have to worry about anybody else being around me because I'm, I'm at the back. One of the things I really like is you call yourself a dreamer. What do you mean yeah. by that? I don't feel like I'm that talented, but I'm somebody that I was like instilled from a very young age to really just dream big and work really hard. And I'm not saying that other people don't work really hard because I think everybody 
in this sport or anybody that's successful in life does work hard. But some people are more blessed than others. I always say I err on the less blessed side of talent of things and even <clears throat> probably smarts and things like that. But I just work really hard and I'm not afraid to dream. So I set my, my goals really high. And if I fail, I'm like not afraid of failing. I, I'm totally okay with failing. When was the last time you stayed up past 4 a.m.? Probably in my days of banking when I would pull all-nighters. So I left banking in 2011, probably 2010. What? <laughs> I, I like I to mean, go to bed at 7.30. I mean, it's in the nicest way possible, but that makes you sound a little bit boring. <laughs> I know. It will be my mission from here on out the next time you're at a race that I am seeing to direct you to the after party and make sure you go to bed after 4 a.m. That sounds it's good. Happening. <laughs> okay. I was talking with Chelsea about our hidden talents the other day, and I said, well, I can rap. And so then I tried to rap a song for her and realized that I know none of the words. I do not care if the words are correct. I want to hear it. It's Alex. Alex, four and a half. It's want some tits and it got some ass. There's two things in life I cannot remember, like if my life depended on it. It's movie scenes, or the, the dialogues in it, and song lyrics. I know. I'm with you. That song, Pour Some Sugar On Me. Do you know that song? Pour some sugar on me. No. For a long time, I thought those lyrics were awesome, see, go away. So I would be singing in my, wherever, with my friends. I'd be like, awesome, see, go away. But that's not the lyrics at all. What's the non-triathlon related dreams? Are there any? Oh God, everything about my life has been about triathlon for the last 10 years. Well, my dream in triathlon was to win Kona, which I really believed for a long time was going to be possible. I don't think that it's possible anymore. I, I, I think that like, <clears throat> I don't know, something would have to seriously happen for me to win Kona at this point, just because I think that the way that the the women's professional field has evolved. I think it'd be really hard for me, but that's the thing I've been chasing for all these years.